It's not just the new venue in town. It's a monument to live entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome The Monument, the new premier concert and event venue in Winchester. Two stories, state-of-the-art sound, delicious food and drink, and the best in live events. The Monument, on the corner of Loudoun and Piccadilly in Winchester, and right at the cutting edge of live entertainment. Go to themonumentva.com. That's themonumentva.com for events, tickets, special offers, and more. The Monument, we'll see you at the next show. Welcome to No Concessions, Episode 5. I'm Justin with Chef Chris here. We have some amazing guests with us today. Um, Chris Darlington's performing tonight. This is the first time we've done a show in the green room when it's being used as a green room uh, before they perform this evening. We have Officer Daniels here, uh, or Justin, and Maurice. Every time I say your name, I just think of the song. Everybody calls me Maurice. You know, I've, I've yet to hear that song. Never? Never. You've never you heard the Joker by Christine Miller? No, I've never heard the song. Some people call me <clears throat> Maurice. That's the only part I know, just because people keep saying it, but I've never heard the song. I think you could crush it. Uh, I'm, I'm still not going to listen to it. You should. It's a good song. <clears throat> it's got some uh, extracurricular activities in it so that, you, that you in, like to indulge in. Oh, yeah? yeah. No, okay. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm liking what I hear now. I might take a look. I might take a look. Midnight Toker. Midnight Toker, baby. By who? Uh, well, there's a lyric in there. The yeah, song's called what... The Joker. Oh. It's by Steve Miller. Or Steve, oh, Miller. Steve, Miller Steve Miller Band. Oh, so his name is... Oh, man. I know you know that song, Maurice. <laughs> no, I don't. What? I don't know. You gotta get the national one. Because they play it every time you go to a bar. Yeah. Sir, I'm gonna need you to speak into the mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that better? Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Oh, now my eardrums are blowing. That's better for you. Yeah. We can I'm, share. Yeah, we'll share that. All right. <clears throat> anyway, thanks for coming out. Are, are you doing like a life in the, in the, with Darlington or something? I see you're up there on stage with him, looking around, asking questions. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm about to launch my country music career, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. I keep telling him to do it. You see, you're studying it and seeing what's going on, what you need. Yeah, I've never, I mean, obviously I've been on stage for like some speaking stuff, but as far as concerts, this is like my last night at the other place was my first time, and I'm sold. I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to country music. <laughs> it's the, the thing to do right now. It is. Yeah. All the cool people are doing it apparently. Yeah. Wow. Well, Irish mules, country music. There you go. You know, yeah. Chris had uh, reached out. Maybe when did you release "Hold That Line"? So, <clears throat> so we released uh, "Hold That Line," which was uh, March fourth. So you probably reached out about like three weeks prior? It's probably a month or so or maybe three weeks prior. Yeah, to so that. it's like right around the time I got yeah. COVID probably. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I sent him an email, you know, didn't think he was going to respond and then he, he was dumb and responded. So <laughs> hey, here we are. Yeah. yeah. You're a unicorn too, dude. I am. You know, it's I two am. unicorns meeting up right now and <laughs> galloping right. through the fields of that's right. Virginia. Yeah, that's right. The fields now, of you, Monument you, Entertainment. <clears throat> yeah, uh police officer that uh, is, is a good musician and, oh, and, a, and a good uh somewhat. got good stage presence the first time we had you down here is apple blossom and it got real yeah man, you got your crazy. pictures on our website oh man, man I, I appreciate it yeah we're giving love to you uh and then you told me you had another visitor coming up how how the heck you get here dude you're the best dress we've had so far oh, yeah, <laughs> oh man yeah not the we best. had two people that hey, are now in second and <clears throat> third place it was benjamin weimer and uh number one and, was the uh, water Steve, bridge yes and um man were you doing name dropping <laughs> anyway we, man? yeah uh yeah anyway now you take the prize man this is a nice outfit okay 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 nice flex i like it uh but how'd you end up up here with darlington the game um so justin actually hit me up and he was like hey i got this gig man you want to play and i was like duh Anything he asked me to do, I'm glad. I'm glad to do it. You know, he supported me in ways that people who know me don't even support me. You know, and this guy did, hasn't known me from a grain of salt since he met me. I mean, we know each other now, but you know, all the support that he's given me, you would think like we're like blood brothers or something like that. You know, that's great. It's actually a pretty cool story. So, obviously, I'm on TikTok and I scroll TikTok all the time, and this dude's out on Bourbon Street, and people are videotaping him all the time performing. But they'd never tag him. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to know who this guy is. I'd see him, but <laughs> nobody ever tag him, right? So never. I was in Louisiana for a wedding and wake up one morning, get on TikTok. First video is him getting stopped by the police 
because somebody had called the cops on him for singing. And he had posted it. I'm like, thank God, I finally found his profile. So I followed him. The video is a cool video because the, the cop didn't give him shit. He actually tipped him and said, like, stay away from the Yeah, he the just road. asked me to move over a little yeah. bit. Stay, stay away safe. from, be safe. Don't be so oh, close to the road. Okay. But it, somebody had called in and yeah. complaining about him. So it was a great video for me to share, you know, the law enforcement connection. And I'm like, I want to support him and get him out there as much as I can. So uh, I think, yeah, the same day I we actually kind of talked back and forth and message. That same day, Chris had asked me to host these shows. And we met up and he performed and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell Chris I'm only going to do these shows if he lets Maurice come open. So That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you hit me with the surprise. I was like, yeah, man, let's do this. Because I was just trying to get uh, a Labor Day weekend <clears throat> put together. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because um, in this restaurant game and hospitality and the entertainment world, uh, these, this holiday weekend could be hit or miss. It depends on how you play cards. So I was like, this sounds like a great deal. Yeah. yeah. Get it going for sure. Um, and I saw, uh, I think... I was familiar with this Cheerio scenario that you have on a video uh, about budgets and appropriations of budgets. Oh, that's and, a, uh, yeah, because I was looking at that one uh, and I was like really into it. Uh, and it kind of gave me a, a different. Uh, I, I do remember grant money being a process in my past careers uh-huh. uh, and and getting some really cool gear that way. Yeah. And then, uh, so that kind of brought that full circle and made it sound more clear for me. I don't know if you want to explain what I'm talking about with the Cheerio video. Do you know yeah, what I'm about? I, I do not. <laughs> I mean, well, it was, I think I posted that before COVID, so it's been a few years, but for some reason that video took off, and I don't, that's not like my normal kind of video, you know, it's normally like comedy and satire and kind of picking fun of myself kind of thing, but I was getting so <clears throat> tired of people talking about defund, defund. Like, oh, they spend so much money. They're, they're spending millions of dollars on military equipment. And I'm like, okay, let's educate some people today. So basically, there's just a lot more to it than these police departments having this huge bu- budget to train cops to kick people's asses, right? It's Most of the budget goes towards cell phones and laptops and secretaries and Kleenexes. And, you know, all that is all included. And people don't realize that. So... When you do cut the budget, you're actually taking away salaries more than anything. But the training budget, you know, if you want people to be better at their job, they need more training. But you're going to decrease that training budget. It doesn't sound like the right plan to me or I think most people. So, you know, that's just something. Yeah, I, I, had to, I had to get really that clever. off my chest. That's cool. Like, well, that and it was a... What do you call those when you re- respond to somebody? Retweet? Um, not a retweet, but a, when you show a portion of somebody's video and then you jump in and like, ah, 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 a stitch. Thank you. Oh, it was a, it was a going on on the internet. stitch. Yeah, it was a, a TikTok stitch. That guy had was trying to explain his side of defunding the police. <clears throat> and I'm like, eh, it doesn't really work that way. Let me uh, try to educate people and Bring show the other knowledge. side. Yeah, yeah, so. And for some reason it took off because of, that's not my normal material, so I'm like, it's not going to go anywhere, but hopefully if one or two people hear it, I'm like, okay, there's a lot more to this than just what people, are, what the mainstream media and everybody is trying to portray about police budget, so. I thought it was a great uh, illustration, if you will. Perfect, thank uh, you. Um, you. Sometimes when you're talking to all types of different people, you have to break it down to elementary level education, and sometimes having something in your hand or some kind of like tool. Right. Helps the brain to understand what's going on. And I mean, that guy that I stitched, I mean, he did a great job explaining his side. Right. Did I agree with everything he said? Obviously not. But yeah. I mean, it was a great analogy that I could piggyback off of. So it was cool. I mean, I would love to sit down with that guy and be like, well, you know, how do we fix the issue? Obviously, you and I are talking points, but neither of that's going to fix the issue of what we're both upset about. Yeah. So, you know, that's where we need to get. A Not lot just, of root thinkers. Right. Think about the roots of right. where we are and what we do and how we got here. Um, Maurice, tell me a little bit more about this experience in Hollywood. Um, well it goes it goes past way way further back than Hollywood, man. I didn't just jump from New Orleans to Hollywood. Um without like going too much into detail because it's crazy. Um, just living down in New Orleans, um, 
it brought me like a new perspective on life. You know, and when COVID happened, I couldn't, I couldn't perform. You know, there was nobody down in the quarter. Uh, there was no shows, no businesses uh, to pitch music to. So I was like, where are people at? And that was gas stations. So I started hitting the road and just going to gas stations along the Gulf Coast. And um, eventually I was like, all right, I need to go somewhere else. And I went to Colorado. And I drove one of the oldest trucks I got. It was a 91 C3500. I ended up blowing the motor. It took me like a week and a half to get there. But the day I got there, like the hour, the minute I got there, I started performing in Boulder, Colorado. <clears throat> and um, I'll never forget, the second song I sung was uh, Chris Stapleton starting over. And this lady walks up to me. Um, she's like, I'm one of the top producers for American Idol. And I was like, okay. You know, because people... Say crazy. I've, I've been street performing for about four or five years now. And, man, this crazy shit people says. Yeah. I don't know. Can I say, can I say you shit? You can say whatever you I want. I can say bro. shit. All right. Yeah. The cra- shit, <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> the crazy shit people say, man, you'd be surprised. So I just took it for a grain of salt. And uh, she sent me an email. Um, it was a professional email. It was at Disney.com. And I was like, whoa. <clears throat> so uh, long story short, she sent me an audition link. Um. I actually sent her videos while I was performing because, like, it's like a job to me, you know? So I was out there, and um, I had the people who were watching video it. And I was like, hey, I'm supposed to send in videos for American Idol. Can y'all video this? And they were like, oh, my God, yes. And I was like, all right, cool. So I started saying, you know, the video, and I sent it in. Two weeks later, I get this message. Congrats, you've been um selected to perform in front of the celebrity judges. And I was like, all right, cool. But I didn't realize that was, like, that was it. You know, so I was waiting on like another audition and the next email I got was like, here's your tickets. And I was like, whoa. So I get out there and um, it's just like this ocean of amazing singers, this ocean of people just like me. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> this is what I'm up against. And, um, you know, everybody who is an artist, they're always more critical of themselves than anybody else. And so, like, just hearing all this amazing talent, I was like, man, do I have what it takes? But um, I got into the room, you know, in front of Luke, Brian, and Lionel. And um, I lost my breath for a second, but I just tried to pretend like I was back there on the streets. And uh, when I got the golden ticket, it was crazy. And I, it was almost like everything that I've done up until that point was, like, for a reason. Like, this was supposed to happen. I'm like, all right, so when when this happened, that led me to that. All right, so that made sense now. And then, um, sadly, none of my Hollywood performances were aired, but man, those were some of the best performances of my life. And um, I didn't even go on American Idol with the intention to win. I already knew there was going to be so many other musicians there that I could build relationships with that would last a lifetime. I was like, somebody here is going to win. You know, I was like, somebody here is going to be in the top 20 to top 10. Somebody here is going to uh, probably make a song and be number one. A few people here are going to have number one hits. And mark my words, Noah had a few number one hits. Uh, Pretty much anybody who was in the top five, they had a number one hit. It's crazy when you have Disney behind you. But um, so, yeah, just building those relationships was my top priority. So uh, my experience in Hollywood was just me trying to make sure that once it was over, you know, I still had something to look back on to, something to smile about, and I still had things to look forward to, yeah. you know, so that's that's what I got from it. That's it's a I big got. journey, man. And that, that's a, a great story. Um, I'm sorry, this ginger and this mule Moscow. Or Are you, I don't Irish, hear what's going oh, on, I'm man. sorry. <laughs> you need some beer, man, drinking that. I keep choking on my own spit. <laughs> Liquid not, death. I don't know what's going on. Oh no, he's drinking that drink. I'm drinking that. Oh, that drink. That's what y'all get, that's, man. That's the Irish. That's the Irish mule, man. Oh, Makes y'all want to be all fancy with the crazy stuff. Oh. So is that? Hello, Chris. You gotta take that right, So he says he has. So I think what you're doing, you're playing this off. I think that story was so great, and it made he's you sad. Me up. And it's choking you up. Come on. <laughs> Okay. You know I got that soft side, Chris. Oh, oh God. shit! Oh, God. <laughs> Flag on the play. That's all right. Well, we'll get it. It's Marty Fowl. It's the ginger in the room. Uh, all right. So that was awesome. And what you, what are you gonna do now? Are you uh, writing a record or moving um, forward? Or 
you, you so, made those networking connections? I did actually. And um so me and the guys we've met up in different cities around the country and um not to like toot my own horn, but like I encourage everybody, all the musicians that I know, to get out in the streets, like whatever you want, don't wait for it. Go get it. So I encourage them to go perform, go perform in front of record labels. Like I performed with these guys in front of Big Loud, uh, record labels out in Nashville. And um, we've made money together. Like we, I brought them down to New Orleans. Me, my guy Hazi, my guy Jordan Chase. Jordan Chase was like up there in the competition. You know, that's one of the guys that made it far. Um, a few other guys, a few of the guys that didn't get aired, but we made over a thousands of dollars just singing on the streets together. You know, and we had, we had the best of times. We were able to, to, uh, have like so many different opportunities together. And all that came from American Idol, just us meeting our, each other and maintaining those relationships. Cause there's some guys that I met on the show that like, don't talk to me. They'll be weird. And like, like everything I post or like, not even everything. Like some of the guys, they'll like one, or like some other girls or guys might like might like like anything at all. And um, so the ones that I have been able to maintain relationships with, you know, I wanna like make sure I hold on to those. So just the things that we've been able to do together, and um, outside of them, just uh, the show in general has just taught me just there's so many other people, you know, so many other people out there, and um. Some of the guys that I'm with, we're uh, trying to write some songs together. I have some guys on a uh, TikTok pitching me some stuff. It's crazy how the internet works, man. It's so crazy. Yeah, you seem to be doing a really good job with that as, yeah. as well. This this gentleman here is killing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we've had several uh, you know artists come through, and, and they're really well known and respected in the music community. But like almost everyone I referred to that you were coming out of the podcast guest coming out today immediately knew who you were. Oh, really? Uh, this was like the awareness is up there. That's awesome uh, for this. That's awesome. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so, are you all going to partner together now that you've met each other for a few days? Do these couple videos or what? Well, it's been more than a few days. Um. Yeah, when was it? it was two months ago now? Yeah, it's like oh, a okay. like an unspoken, just not even a partnership, just like a, a respect for each other, you know? Like, um, obviously he has like millions of freaking followers and a lot of people they charge thousands of dollars to, to put your post on a story for twenty four hours. It's a whole science to how deep it goes and this guy's just freely just being an amazing human. You know, he sees something that he believes in and he's just supporting it. Yeah. And obviously I don't have the same audience as him, but you know, I can return the favor like comment share whatever he does that i see you know i'm not i'm obviously not on his page just stalking him <laughs> but you know it's just like a mutual a mutual friendship that's just blossomed and like if it gets you know business down the road happens you know then business happens but um who knows where things will go you know? that's cool man i think uh maurice is gonna need his uh security team here pretty soon <laughs> I, I better be in charge of his security team yeah we have a couple guys that we didn't have a lot of security booked mm -hmm. tonight because uh I mean, if something Security's goes wrong, here. I feel pretty safe with yeah. the fellows that are hanging out on the stage and around the stage this evening. Well, not Garlington's crew. I think <laughs> a lot of our audience is going to be packing tonight too. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, for sure, I feel pretty safe. Yeah. Um. So, Garlington, tell me, whenever you you go out and party, mm -hmm. do do the guys come? Is it like a brotherhood? Is that how like uh, you have more support than the average man? You believe? So. You're speaking in like law enforcement friends? Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, I think uh, when we go out and play on the weekends, and that seems like it's about every weekend now, uh, we got a, we got a lot of law enforcement people that show up, but we got a lot of just regular people in the community that show up too. So it's it's a good mix, and I love it because it just seems like, you know, like last night we had probably 1,500 people, but it's cool when you, you know about half of those people, and everybody knows you by name, and you can go out and talk to them they're all semi-local and uh, it's just a good feeling you know when people know who you are and everybody's having a good time there's no trouble um, I haven't been to one gig here local that, that I've ever seen any trouble here in West Oaks or, or wherever we play so the only thing that sucks is some firefighter shops yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was is that really a thing? They got um, it's a, a friendly banter yeah alright that's you know the, the how would you describe that, Chris? That relationship, <laughs> like a love, like, like a love hate. hate. Yeah, like, all right. You know, it's... obviously we go to bat for each other, but we also have to give each other shit. Just your typical. Maybe a little bit of jealousy. Yeah, the firefighters do have a lot better. 
Yeah, then they get to sleep on the job and not get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> when I slept on the job, I got written up. Or you get shot. Or you get yeah. shot. Yeah. If I may add, <laughs> if I may add, <laughs> just uh, remember I said it's crazy how like the internet works, man. It's crazy how the universe works. Like, uh, I don't know if y'all know, but I, I before I turned eighteen, like I did. I signed out of foster care at 18 and I was in foster care for the uh, majority of my life. Three days after I was born, I was in foster care. And um, I'm sure y'all know some of the statistics that we're just naturally messed up kids. And that's not wrong. That's not wrong at all in any sense. We are. We really are. And it's just because we don't have the resources, you know, the the teaching, the community to actually help us. They just put us places and just hope that something happens. But um, I just think it's funny because, like, after I turned 18 and signed out, I went wild. I did a bunch of illegal stuff <laughs> and um, stuff that I still have warrants for. And I don't try to Be hide careful. it. Be nah, careful. Be careful. I got jurisdiction here. I got to report these things. I don't, try, I, I don't try to hide it. All of them are in-state only, so I'm, I'm good. So I just don't go to that state. <laughs> shout, shout out to South Carolina. <laughs> but um, I'm sitting here in front of, like, Two cops, <laughs> you know, one cop, he helped change my life. You know, the other one, he's just this amazing guy. And it's just crazy how the universe works, man. You know, that's kind of weird to me, but it is what it is. You know? Hey, on a serious note, though, the only thing I want you to do when you get that Big Loud's record deal, Big Loud Records with uh, Morgan Wallen. And by the way, I, I don't think you might have mentioned, but we didn't get to talk about that yet. But he got to play with uh, Morgan Wallen about a month ago in Atlanta, Georgia. So yeah. that was some pretty cool stuff to see. Yeah. But the message I'm getting is I want you to know and I want you to tell all your buddies that that yeah, there's definitely some bad cops out there. And and, and I hate to see it. Um, I just ran into an incident about a month ago where one was directing traffic at the place I was playing and he was a complete asshole. And and, I, and it took everything I had not to turn around and, and give him some shit, but then I probably would have gotten in trouble. But I just want you to spread the word that, you know, no matter what profession it is, you know, there's a bad apple somewhere. But, you know, mo most of us are pretty good dudes and we'd probably yeah. give you the shirt off our back. So, yeah. Spread the good word and, and keep the, you know, hopefully you can make it a better, better place together. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, man. Up until that video that uh, Justin was talking about where the officer uh, tipped me, um, being a street performer, I've had a lot of, like, hundreds of running with the cops. And I'm, I'm, I gotta tell you, man. Um, that was the first one that was positive, the absolute first. Yeah, and that was just a few months ago. And um, I've been a street performer since I was 18 up until now. So that's, and I mean, like, literally hundreds, like maybe not 500, but one or 200, man. A, a lot of runners with the cops just being just messed up people for no reason. You know, and seeing that, seeing that guy at the gas station meeting uh, Justin, meeting you, you know, it's it's definitely the brighter side of things, you know. And um, but trauma lasts a long time. Like I said, I've I've had guns put on me, I've been beaten up, you know, for riding a riding in riding a a bike in the wrong lane type stuff. Like it's crazy this country, man. And uh, like you said, it's I feel I really believe the majority of you guys are good, you know. But um, the internet is a crazy place, and with the world we live in, just negativity just thrives on the internet. You know, people love to see that, and that's what does numbers. People love to see that. Nobody's posting the officers that are saving lives. Nobody's posting that. Nobody's posting the officers who are risking their lives. You know, nobody's posting the firefighters. I haven't seen a firefighter post a jet. You know, <laughs> I haven't seen any viral videos about a firefighter uh, saving lives, but. People don't like that. The world just thrives off of negativity, man. And uh, we're just a few people, but we can make a big difference. I feel like the places that I've been, the places you've been, places you've been, I feel like people can say that, hey, uh, this guy has impacted the way I think or impacted the way that I'm going to proceed in the future. So, although, you know, we can't change the whole world, I feel like we should keep doing what we're doing. Because yeah. you know, it, it matters. It matters. I think getting in each other's space is the first step. Uh, what I mean by that, I grew up in East Tennessee, and, the, and you know my high school. I think 
there was one minority, maybe two total. I have like 1,600 people. And uh, when I moved to Virginia uh, and then eventually up to Northern Virginia to work in, in Alexandria or D.C. or wherever I was, the more time I spent with different people from different places, the uh, more I found commonality and um, just overall understanding of what it's like. So I think that a lot of there's a lot of money and profit that is definitely made off of emotional responses yeah. and being able to separate people from what they don't truly understand because they haven't experienced it. And it, the human condition is one that until you have a, an objective change in your surroundings or in an engaged relationship or whatever it might be, um, it's really hard to change your subjective thought process. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, the internet could be used uh, for a very great positive, you know, impact on the world and also negative um, yeah so I mean just speaking the truth being around people it, I think is the first key just being in their in their space in their bubble and uh, usually the commonalities will come out real quick like my upbringing of, of being around music and the type of foods we ate and the way we acted when we had too many drinks or whatever very similar to the way uh, other people behave um, you know I was at a huge cookout with a, a, a bunch of Jamaican folks that came to work uh, with me at the Homestead Resort. It would be like 600 come every year. And I, they needed a DJ. I DJ party. I didn't know shit about DJ really. And then afterwards, we killed a goat together and ate that shit. We was, <laughs> we was drunk. Everybody got along. It was awesome. I think that was like one of the we first cultural shocks. Goat. Nothing brings people together like <laughs> drunk goat killing. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So uh, tonight we feast. Everybody feasts, you know what I'm saying? In different type of ways and different type of music. Did you bite the beating heart? I did not do anything oh, crazy. Oh, man. I just had it seasoned and ate it. <laughs> it was good. Um, so thanks for coming out. I don't know how much. What time we got, guys? We got uh, we're about 20 to 8. All right, cool. 20 till 8? 20 to 8. Yeah. Oh, wow. I can hear people in the distance Yeah, the I can first hear time. people. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a 100-year-old building right now. This is the birthday. Is this really a bank? Uh, oh, bank? It was, yeah. Shenandoah National. So this That's is the vault the, door right there. Those are security boxes right before. Think about how much money used to be in here, y'all. Soak up the energy. Soak up that I'm energy. I'm trying to get that yeah. money energy. Do you guys have the keys so for all these? Uh, we have a few oh. over here. I'm, there's, I'm sure that Ron has there stuff in there? Keys. These Shout are the out Captain Ron. Are, are you sure? Nothing's left. They've all been checked? Are you positive? I'm, I'm getting some energy from this. I thing. have, by experience, found that when people vacate banks, the only thing they leave is office spots. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of furniture and office supplies. So if you're looking to buy up old banks, be prepared to store the furniture and you don't have to buy as much stuff from Staples anymore. Just okay. in case you're in the market. Yeah. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, 100 years this building's been here. Um, Ron designed it and created this beautiful music venue. So, uh, Ron McGee, I hope shout it out. Gets wild. Yeah. 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 You're going to open up the show. You're like the MC tonight, right? Let's get ready to rumble. The master of ceremonies, baby. <laughs> yeah. The show uh, is about to I'm, begin. I, I might be singing a little bit, too. We'll see. Really? We'll see. Just yeah, a little bit. Everybody can come back up second second and join us. All right, Chris, tell me a little bit what's going on today. What you what you want to tell people? So here's what we got cooking. So uh, Maurice is going to do his street thing um, here in about 20 minutes. And we'll let the MC Daniels, introduce him. And then we'll go to about an hour to about nine o'clock, correct? And then uh, we'll go full band for about an hour and play. We ain't gonna cut you short now. Um, then we'll probably take a take a ten minute break or something, and then he's gonna come back up with us, and we're just gonna party on for another hour. And then we're gonna take it to about eleven thirty. And then I will tell you what, if it's if it's cool with you, we might pass a hat or maybe Maurice's hat or my tip jar. They could fill that thing up. We'll play another hour if you want. That's it's all. I'm a preacher, son, dude. I'll pass the hat all day long. That's all I do. do. Cause we got oh. plenty. We got plenty of music. <laughs> all right. Um, thanks for coming, guys. This is going to be on Spotify. We have a YouTube channel. This is the fifth one we've done. We just wanted to um, bring everyone's attention to all the different people that come into our place. Because unlike most business models, which is like, here's our product, here's our product. I, I would think this is like a car, and we've got the cool lights, and the body frame. <laughs> But the engine changes every weekend. 
So like last night we had EDM engine in here and the young kids were getting weird with the lights and the can the that CO two cannons. <laughs> Tonight we're gonna let y'all rock the engine and see what y'all's engines like. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's so exciting to do that every every weekend. Mm-hmm. We're blessed to have this opportunity. So on Spotify and um, obviously YouTube, no concessions like K N O W, um, which is wordplay. You know. Shout out no concessions. First podcast. All yeah. right. And we're glad you were this is your thank podcast. You, thank man. you. Uh, thank you guys. We put them out on Tuesday, so we'll make sure it's edited and polished in ten eighty P and see you on the other I'm Sorry side. for coughing yeah. through the whole thing. Yeah, have you got anything you want to add? Any jokes to zingers? Oh man. I think you need to go stand up comedy, <laughs> man, after watching your videos. I, I did a little a little stint. Uh that was quite the experience. I was the MC for Trailer Trash Tammy stand up tour. Oh and uh you know, she can get pretty raunchy, and so I had to be pretty raunchy, and it was kind of difficult. <laughs> I was telling jokes about myself that I never thought I would ever tell. Who's your favorite comedian? Mm. Yourself. You know, yeah, myself. Um, <laughs> you know, I have a, a real soft spot for Robin Williams, honestly. Rest his soul, but that guy was a comedic yeah. genius. Yeah, and uh, as far as like people out now, everything is just so mainstream. You know, it's like like we're forced to like these people. Like it's it's, yeah. it's it's different than back when Robin Williams and Richard Pryor. You know, I love Richard Pryor, and I I think the current goat is Dave Chappelle. Oh, Dave Dave is and great. Then Jerry Seinfeld is still number two goat. <laughs> I don't have Eddie Murphy, man. All Charlie day. Murphy's good. And God bless Dave Chappelle. Murphy. Shout out Dave Chappelle. I did have the pleasure <laughs> of, uh, it was really ironic, actually. So in Colorado, there's a place called Comedy Works, and there's two locations. Uh, Trailer Trash Tammy's new tour, which kicked off back in March or April. She was at one location. While we're performing, we get word that Dave Chappelle's in town and going to do a pop-up show at the other location at 11 o'clock when we finish in about 10 and they're connected and they're like you guys get your asses down to the other location when the show air ends and so we got to go see dave chappelle and i wasn't fortunate enough to meet him but they they brought chelsea back uh tammy and her and dave got to hang out in the back and i mean that was a trip do you guys did you guys see the video where she smashed a roach with her titty <laughs> <laughs> you've oh seen boy. it no i haven't that had just come out. It had been out a few weeks, but it went viral. And all of Dave Chappelle's security and his posse and everybody, when she passed by, and they're like, oh, my God, it's the Tent Roach girl. What? <laughs> Dave hadn't seen it. Yeah. So they made Chelsea sit next to him on the couch in the green room and watch it with her sitting there. And he lost his shit. Oh, oh man. <laughs> have you seen it? No, I have not. I will pull it up. She literally... She has to pull up King. You know. Why well, am I pulling up? <laughs> Before we wrap, just in King. case uh, you, anybody <laughs> doesn't know who these gentlemen are and what's going on here, uh, do you want to tell people where to find y'all before we wrap up? Yeah, I'm Officer Daniels, and Officer Daniels, all one word on all platforms. My name is Maurice, and y'all can find me everywhere at Maurice the Music. It's M-A-U-R-I-C-E, the music. That sounds like a song. It, it should be. It should be. <laughs> So I'm uh, Chris Darlington, and you can look me up pretty much anywhere. Chris Darlington Music. That that would be for the website, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And uh, if you need something when I'm working, Frederick County Sheriff's Office, 540-662-6162. Not emergency, though. Not emergency, though. Not not one. No snitching. No snitching. (laughs) (laughs) Only only stitching. Stitching, not snitching. We got one thing to clear up. Oh, if yeah. we take this show on the road, we can't go to South Carolina. Just remember mm. that. Oh, yeah. No South Carolina. Word. Or you well, just when I get my first million, <laughs> I'll buy a law firm and we, we'll see what happens. Well, maybe the statute of limitations will be out by then. Mm, no. no. No? All right. No. Well. Yikes. <laughs> I will. Nikki Haley, if you're watching this, you need to do something for my man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. All right, that's it. <laughs> hey, Tim Penny, thanks for having us. Seriously, thanks for booking us. We appreciate it.